Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video, and today we have yet another retro console. This time, it's a portable one, and it's called the Retro Mini. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we have here is essentially a Game Boy looking thing that is miniaturized, but is actually meant to play Game Boy Advance games first. But it can also play other consoles, which we'll talk about in just a bit here. So yeah, it resembles an original Game Boy in a miniaturized version inside a black smoked color case, which looks pretty nice. The PCB is actually blue, and that's what it kind of looks like on the inside. Seems like they had plans for a fully transparent version, but they didn't release it. But yeah, this one still looks pretty nice. Um, on the back, we got uh, shoulder buttons, of course, because they're supposed to be playing Game Boy Advance games. And a replaceable battery that is actually rechargeable through micro USB. Headphone jack, volume, the power switch and an SD card slot, so you can actually load your own games, which is pretty nice, and there are a few games that are pre-installed. First off, what we have here is actually a power and charging LED indicator. Take a look at the display here, we actually have a 240 by 160 resolution TF panel display, and that's actually really good because it is the native resolution of the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Color, and the Game Boy Original, which means the games are gonna look pretty nice, and there won't be any need for scaling or weird resolution stretching or whatnot. So the games are going to look as good as they were on the Game Boy. Worse or better, you decide. Right beside it, we've got an LED indicator for charging and power. And right under it, we got a retro mini minimal branding right there. That's the only brand you're going to find on this thing. And it's pretty nice. It's very simplistic, nothing crazy. Very out of your way. Right down here, we got a speaker that sounds okay in some games and not so much in others. And it's definitely not gonna sound great if you play other consoles. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the controls here. The controls here are actually really good. They all press down very nice and evenly. And I gotta say, these are fantastic to play games on. They feel great, they're very responsive, and overall, you're not gonna be disappointed, at least with the front side. Of the controls. When it comes to the shoulder buttons, they're actually tactile buttons. This console is small, so it's going to be harder to press. Personally, I would have liked the shoulder buttons to be easier to click, but they do work. They don't miss a beat, and overall, they get the job done without much issues. So overall, the controls here are pretty good. So so far, so good. But now let's go ahead and switch on the console, which will give you this fish splash screen. It's pretty generic, and uh, you have a bunch of things in the menus here. So starting off with the settings, we got first desktop set, and that is we can change your wallpaper, and that's what they look like. And personally, I like the fourth version, which is the cleanest one. Then we have the backlight luminous, and you want to definitely set this as 5, because you definitely want to get the maximum brightness that you can get. I'm going to set the uh, display on always on. We can get this video without it shutting down. Moving on to languages, we got a bunch of different languages you can choose from. Just a whole lot of languages, all right? Then we got sound, and that's we can choose the beeping noise. Or you can just turn it off. And then, of course, again, we got the recovery system, which will just reset your settings in the menu. Now, moving on to the next menu option, we got File Manager. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. We got the ebook reader, and, and yeah, you can read ebooks. Then you got a picture viewer where you can view pictures because who doesn't want to view it on this tiny screen? And you got a video player where you have a preloaded video of, uh, yep, Crazy Frog. And then we finally have something useful, and that would be music. I'm just kidding. It's another music player that you're not going to use. So, so music, video, pictures, and ebook are stuff that you find on those MP4 players. They used to see back then on eBay that were sold pretty much everywhere. And finally, we get to games. And inside the games, they'll find two options, the U-Disc and the SD card. So let's go ahead and take a look at the U-Disc, where the 36 built-in Game Boy Advance games are built into here. And I got to tell you guys, there's a really nice selection of games, but they are all in Chinese, so maybe not so good. But let's take a look at what we have here. So we got Metal Slug, we got Mario Kart, we got Mario, and uh, we got a whole bunch of games like King of Fighters, I believe. Uh, there's also some soccer, some... A whole lot of games that would be nice to play if they were in English, but some of them are actually easy to play. Some of them are already in English. It's a mixed bag, really, when it comes to the built-in games here. For example, we got Driver 3 right here, and it's kind of like a Grand Theft Auto game where you can get into cars and drive them around town, which is pretty cool on a tiny system like this. We got Mega Man and a whole lot of things that are fantastic in my opinion. It's a really nice selection of games that are built into this thing. I just wish that they were in English. Now the nice thing about the built-in games here is that you actually have screenshots which uh, helps a whole lot when you're trying to browse through these things when you don't know Chinese. So out of the box, it's a pretty good selection. You can definitely enjoy playing some games, especially games like Mario Kart and I gotta say they all run pretty good. Now it does lag in some cases in some games in some areas. It does lag. It's not 100% at full speed but it does reach 
full speed most of the time. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the SD card and this is where the good stuff begins. So basically this console can play Game Boy Advanced games and it can also play NES and Mega Drive slash Genesis. And basically those are the three native supported consoles that you can play on this thing. Now inside the game section of this thing I have uh, set it up in a way so it's easier to browse and understand which is which. So before we do anything let's take a look at the SD card. Inside we have an SD card that is included in the package. This is an 8 gigabyte SD card that is filled up with about 3000 games of Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Original. And now you're wondering why does it have original and Game Boy Color? I thought you said it only had Game Boy Advance and yes and Mega Drive. Well that is because in one of the sections there's actually a selection of games where you actually run them and basically inside is a huge package of games mixed of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. For example, go ahead and run these guys right here. It will boot up this menu right here which will actually have a bunch of games set up in the menu. So right here you can browse through them and choose and as soon as you switch to them here the game in the background will load so you can get to see what is going on and yes the music is in the back too. So some of these games are mostly in Japanese, uh, depends on what games you play. But yeah, these are a mix of Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. Now let's go ahead and go back and I'll show you this menu in just a bit here. Let's go ahead and check out, for example, Classic Nostalgic. So let's go ahead and click that. And there we go. We got a huge selection of games. So um, yeah, they load pretty quickly. They're all very nice and they're, it's just really fun to play around with especially when it comes to these little packages because they got a lot of gold inside which is awesome. So for example right here it's a Game Boy Color game instead and it loads pretty quickly no problems whatsoever and uh, inside of this one there are even more games they can choose from so it is just a really awesome selection of games they have included in the SD card. Now originally these were actually labeled in Chinese believe it or not. Now I went ahead and Google and pretty much translated all of them so I can read them and put them in the SD card. Uh, game folder because in order to get the games to show up in the game section Although you can run them in the file explorer You set up a folder named game in the root of the SD card and that's where you can put your games that will show up in the game section Otherwise, they just simply won't show up So now let's go ahead and quit the game by holding down the start and select which will bring you to this menu right here That gives you save options and that's where you can load save and remove your save files and you have three slots So we got zero one and two for a total of three save slots, which is really awesome now Let's go ahead and cancel out of here and you can resume or just quit the game which will bring you back to the original menu. So here I have a bunch of Game Boy games or should I say the Game Boy Collection games that are taken from the original SD card that I translated which is awesome. And then down here I got some Game Boy Advance games that I got from my own downloaded and here we have some Mega Drive games and NES games. Now before we go ahead and take a look at some game montage let's go ahead and take a look at the file manager. So inside of here you can see how they are labeled. These are the 3000 games that are built into this thing. Basically that's what the folders originally look like and there's the game folder that you want to set up where you have the games. It's pretty simple. Basically right here it's the shortcut for that. So that is actually pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the sound before we get started with the game montage. The speakers on this thing are actually pretty okay and sound pretty good and acceptable when it comes to Game Boy games. Game Boy Color, Advanced and Original. But if you're trying to play NES or Sega games, the speakers just cannot handle the amount of data being pushed into them. I think the sounds are just too complicated for the speaker here. It's kind of like a buzzer speaker from the looks of it. We are going to be taking this thing apart and take a look at it. But yeah, the speaker here sounds pretty okay and very acceptable for Game Boy games. But anything else like a Mega Drive and NES, not so much. So I think that covers everything. Now all I have to do is take a look at the games and see how it performs, sounds like, and what it looks like. So here we go.
Alright, so it plays Game Boy games, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color games fairly well. Now, the Game Boy Color games and the Game Boy Original are running through emulated ROMs. I'm not too sure what those are called, but they are in here, and they are awesome. If you guys know what the name is for those emulated games, I would really like to know. And all of them are running at native resolution. But of course, when it comes to the Mega Drive or the NES, you'll have some kind of scaling issues. Things are not going to look perfect, there are going to be mixing pixels, and text is just going to look pretty bad. Also, sound isn't perfect. You can hear some crackling in some games. So overall, the gaming experience when it comes to playing the NES and the Mega Drive are not perfect. Resolution is not perfect and the sound is not perfect as well. And if you are wondering, the sound output out of the headphone jack is actually perfect. It sounds really good and you could probably even mod this thing and install a better sounding speaker. Now, before we go now, before we go ahead and take it apart, let's go ahead and talk about the battery here. So, the battery life here is about 2.5 to 3 hours in my testing. and also takes about 2 hours to charge. And these are actually Nokia batteries. These are BL5C batteries, and they've been used in Chinese products for a long time. They're just really cheap and easy to get your hands on. I mean, you can even find them on Amazon Prime or eBay, and you can get a bunch of them for cheap. Now, I do happen to have multiple of these, and this is actually the original one that came with this one. It ran out of battery, so I started using these other two that I got from this remote right here that also uses it. You'll find these on Nokia phones like the 3100, which I did own at one point, and Chinese companies have been using these batteries for a long time. As far as I can remember, about nine years ago, I've seen these in Chinese products being used, and probably even way before that. Yeah, these batteries are awesome, they're Nokia, and just really small and compact and easy to get your hands on. So if you wanna expand the battery life, you can easily do it, or just plug in a USB. So yeah, battery life is about three hours or so. You might be able to push it even further, but in my experience, that's what I got with this battery. And if you're wondering what you get in the package, well, you get the console itself, you get a manual that tells you stuff on like how to install your games on the SD card, this generic 8GB SD card, and a micro SD card reader. And of course, a charging cable without the adapter. And that is all you get in the package. Pretty simple, straightforward. So yeah, let's go ahead and take it apart. All right, let's take a look inside. Whoop. All right, so three parts fell out, the shoulder buttons and the power switch, and here are the shoulder button tactile switches. So they're pretty good. And um, here's a quick look at the chip inside. So it says is actually a Samsung chip. Pretty interesting, very nice. It's a Samsung 446, and uh, here's a close up of it. There you go. If you need information about what this chip is, it's right there. And I gotta say, overall the PCB looks pristine, it looks really clean, I gotta say, it looks beautiful, it's blue, and everything is like ribbon cabled, I don't see much soldering going on, you can probably disassemble everything in here. Let's see what's inside this uh, little black piece, it's probably protecting the cables here, I might just keep that right in there. Um, do we have any screws? Yes, we have one screw right there that is uh, pointed with an arrow, which is pretty cool. And so far, I gotta say, it looks like a really good build quality. Okay, here we go. Let's take this apart and just like that. That's the speaker right there. It's a pretty small speaker. Um, I'm gonna just lay it down there and here is the PCB itself. So overall, it's, I gotta say, it's a really clean PCB. I mean, there is nothing bad to say about this. It looks beautiful and it is just really well built. Well, uh, there you go guys. It is running some Samsung chip and the PCB looks awesome on the inside. So yeah, there you go guys. It's a really clean PCB. It plays well and it performs pretty nicely. Playing Game Boy games is really awesome on this thing. And overall, I have been really impressed compared to what I felt about this thing initially. When I first got it, I really did not like it. I thought it was trash. But now, I could definitely recommend this if you can get your hands on it for about $50. Right now, it's about $80. I might try to get some kind of coupon. Definitely recommend this if it's on the $50 range. Anything more, it's really up to you if it's worth it or not. It's a really nice small console that you can easily get rechargeable batteries for, and it uses an SD card. So you can add your games. It's not perfect, but it does what it does, and it does it fairly well in a small compact form factor. Um, it's not a Raspberry Pi, but... It is what it is. So, yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Would I recommend this? Once again, yeah, I would actually definitely recommend this if you can get it for around $50. If you are wondering, yes, this does come with a screen protector. It does have one pre-installed very nicely on the front of the screen. I'm not going to take mine apart. I'm just going to keep it there. But, yeah, guys, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you helpful, if you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.